Hi guys, I'm Ahana and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to juggle building a company with university. If that sounds good to you, then keep on watching. So today's topic hits pretty close to home. As someone who started my entrepreneurial journey while at university, I really understand the struggle of having to juggle classes, assignments, exams with the demands of running a startup. It really is a constant balancing act and requires brutal prioritization. And to be honest, prioritization is something that you need even as you continue on your journey as a founder, even past university. You may not have exams and assignments to juggle anymore, but as your company grows, your responsibilities will grow. And then it will be a juggling act between sales and marketing and tech and product. So developing prioritization skills early on will serve you really well throughout your career as an entrepreneur. So let's dive into how I did this. Now, I will say, I like to think of myself as a pretty pragmatic person. I've never really believed in having it all, and I've always been fairly strategic and realistic in my decisions and my planning. So, it goes without saying that my first tip is to prioritize your tasks. Identify the most important and time-urgent tasks, both for university and for your company, and focus on completing them first. It would be great to get everything done all at once, but that's just not realistic. It's also not necessarily worth working on assignments or problems chronologically as they pop up, as if they don't need to be addressed urgently and you can afford to do them a little bit later, but there is a real crunch period or a potentially big outcome looming on something that needs to happen now, it's important that you've prioritized it so it doesn't get forgotten or delayed. My second tip is to create a structured schedule. I sometimes joke that I'm a slave to my calendar and I have been for many years, but truly that's what helps me get everything done and stay organized. I'm a big fan of time blocking in my calendar because that not only shows me what work I need to prioritize, but it also gives me a space to estimate how long a given task might take. So if you're a student, allocate specific blocks in your calendar to your classes, to your studying, and schedule in the time to work on your startup. Don't work on it ad hoc. If you put it in your calendar and you stick to it, it'll be much easier to actually get work done on both fronts. The third tip is to set realistic goals. It's not healthy to have a have it all mentality because in most cases, it's just not going to happen. So sometimes sacrifices will be needed. I'll give you an example in my case. When I started my degree, I was struggling academically. And the most important thing for me at that stage was security. I need to get this degree and I need to get a graduate job. To get a graduate job, I needed a 2-1. So getting a 2-1 was my number one priority. That was my realistic goal. Then when I got to my fourth year and my grades were a bit better, but there was now this excitement of a startup, I had to ask myself, what do I want to prioritize? The startup or my grades? Do I want to try and aim for a first? I weighed up my situation. The graduate jobs that I'd secured only needed a 2-1, but if I choose to put the extra time that I could have spent studying into working on a startup and that startup takes off, that could have life-changing implications for my career. And so I weighed up those pros and cons and I made the conscious choice that I'm not going to get above a 2-1. I will get my 60.01% and I will not optimize for anything higher. Sure, it would have been really nice to get a first, but the time that I would have needed to invest to increase my grades would have been at the cost of my startup. And had I not worked so hard and diligently on my startup and put so much time into that, I probably wouldn't have got the investment from my Combinator and I probably wouldn't have been able to pursue this as my career at this stage. So it's all about weighing up what's realistic and what actually matters at that point of time. The fifth tip is communication. It's really important to communicate both to your professors or colleagues working on an academic project as it is to your co-founders or the people that you're working on your startup with. One of the worst things that you can do is overcommit and underdeliver. So make sure that you are communicating clearly if there are conflicting priorities or a deadline is tight. Do what you can to communicate clearly if there may be a problem that arises so that if it does, it's not a big surprise. Again, in my case, I was working incredibly hard on my startup during my fourth year. And I actually did tell my master's thesis supervisor this. So he was able to defer some of my deadlines for my thesis so that I could prepare more for my Y Combinator interview. And eventually when Y Combinator invested and I had to take an interruption of studies and eventually drop out, because I had already spoken to the department and I had framed it as it's a 0.001% chance this happens, but I am working on this company and it's a non-zero chance that it happens. Very small, but not zero. So just wanna keep you in the loop. And by doing that, when the 0.0001% case played out and Y Combinator did invest, the process was much more streamlined with my university because they were in the loop of what was going on. The sixth tip I have is around delegation. 
If you are working in a team, don't be afraid to delegate tasks and responsibilities. Now, this is not to say to shirk any responsibility in both contexts, but again, be realistic. If, for example, you're working on a startup, you're the CEO and you're working with a CTO, you don't necessarily have to teach yourself how to code in addition to your studies and CEO responsibilities to contribute more to your company. You can delegate the coding responsibilities to your CTO. Likewise, if you are working on group projects at university, try and select people that you know that will actually do their portion of the work. It happens very frequently that you end up in group projects with people that don't pull their weight and you end up having to make up for them. When you're already balancing your studies with a startup, you don't have the time to make up for other people's lack of contribution. So select team members carefully and make sure that everyone is pulling their weight. The seventh tip is to take care of yourself. University is stressful, building a company is stressful, and you want to make sure that you're not neglecting your own self-care and well-being while going through this stressful period. My eighth tip is be flexible and be adaptable. Now, I know I talked earlier about having a schedule and abiding by your calendar, but priorities can change as new information comes in, things can shift, things can move. And so your calendar is a great baseline to work off and it's good to stick with it. But when things do change, don't be afraid to move those blocks on your calendar, take in the new information and adapt accordingly. Don't let the change rattle you or shake you. It's actually a really great skill to be able to adapt to new circumstances and balancing a startup with university is a great time to develop that skill. My ninth tip is to seek support if you need it. Try to surround yourself with supportive people, whether that's friends, family, classmates. It's even better if you have a community of other student founders who are going through exactly what you're going through, as you can trade experiences and tips for managing the workloads even better. Just having a community of people with whom you can talk about your challenges with can be an incredibly cathartic experience. And my 10th tip is to enjoy what you're doing. Remember, you chose to study the degree that you're doing at university and you chose to start a company. These are both things that if you didn't want to do, you wouldn't. And it's important in the most stressful times to remember you kind of brought it upon yourself in a good way. And this is all going to teach you so much. And no matter what, it will be a super enriching experience. Whether you go on to pursue entrepreneurship after university or not, no matter what, you will have learned from the experience. And that's really the most important thing here. So there you have it. 10 practical tips for balancing university with a startup. It's not always easy, but with the right strategies in place, it's definitely achievable. And that's where I'm gonna leave this video. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see more content just like this, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. All right, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.